Hey guys, Robert with 3D Printscape. I've done a lot of Ender 3 videos over the course of the last several months, so I figured now's a good time to try to do a review on it. Uh, there are some things I wanted to go over, kind of talk about um, my thoughts, whether or not it's worth the money or not, and then just kind of give you some feedback, talk about a couple options if you're not really looking at the Creality line, and then kind of go from there. All right, so first I want to start with the things that they are doing well. All right, before we get started though, make sure you guys hit that like button and subscribe, it'll really help us grow. All right, so things are doing well. Um, this is between the Ender 3 and Ender 3 Pro, is they have a very solid frame. If you're looking on Amazon for some of the uh, cheaper 3D printers, you'll see that a lot of them are just using a 20 by 20 extruded frame instead of the 20 by 40. Um, this actually causes a lot of issues um, because what it does is it creates a lot of instability on your actual uh, z-axis and it basically causes it to shake a, a lot easier and if you're printing anything taller or really if you're just printing in, uh, most things uh, you can see a lot of ghosting I had a printer in the past that was like that it was a 300 by 300 bed uh, with 20 by 20 extruded frame all the way up and around. I ended up having to print braces and then uh, run pretty much 24 inch rods between it to kind of stiffen out the frame. Uh, I know the original Creality CR10, a lot of the people were doing that as a mod as well. Uh, so just kind of steer away from that. If you are looking at a printer, make sure you're getting one that has a solid frame. It'll save you a lot of headache in the future. All right, next, uh, this is more of a difference between the Ender 3 and Ender 3 Pro is it has a good power supply. It has the upgraded power supply, which is one of the bigger differences going between the two, along with a wider frame here for your Y axis, and then uh, a couple other smaller things like they switch this, um, the control box over so that the fans on the bottom set them on the top because it was causing issues where filament would kind of get knocked in it and potentially jam up the fan or worse. But at this price point, it really gives you a lot of printer for the money. If you are wanting to save a couple bucks, you can go down to the Ender 3 and skip the Pro, but you are going to lose a little bit of uh, stability on the frame and the power supply. Um, all the other enhancements are, um, I guess, you can live without them. All right, so that kind of talked about the outline of the printer itself. Now I wanted to get into some of the more specifics. Um, first one being, uh, the community. Uh, so with any printer that you're looking for, even if you don't go with the Ender 3, uh, make sure that they have a strong community around it so that if you run into issues, you have somebody to reach out besides support. Uh, support can help sometimes, but just having forms and all of that regularly available really does help out. It'll save you a lot of time. And then also with the community comes a lot of um, files and stuff people have already made on Thingiverse, like all the mods and stuff that we've talked about that I have on this printer. Um, all of that wouldn't really be available. You'd be kind of creating it from scratch if you wanted it. So that's just something to be more aware of. It's not necessarily a deal breaker, um, but the Ender 3 has a great community, or really the Creality lineup has a good community, and uh, Ender 3 is just one of those printers as well. Um, all right, so let's talk about specs here for a minute. Your Ender 3 has a 230 by 230 bed, but the default firmware blocks out a little bit of that. So you really, you have a 220 by 220 uh, usable build plate. I have videos covering all of this that you can check out. I'll link to them in the description below. Um, but you can unlock that additional uh, 10 by 10. Uh, what that will do though, you gotta be careful if you have any clips or anything, if you have a glass bed that um, you're accounting for that on your print because uh, you, the extruder can hit it if you're using the entire build surface. So just something to think about. All right, circling back to the mods here for a minute. Um, I've printed a handful of them. I have a couple videos covering them. Uh, most importantly, I guess the best ones are going to be your um, filament feeds and your fan duct cover uh, with the BL Touch. Um, those are really, oh, well, they're not really required but they really help out and they don't take long to print and or set up so it's well worth it if you are looking at a bl touch unit uh, i would recommend it they're not that expensive and they save you a lot of time with the leveling and just help get your print that much better all right guys the next thing i wanted to mention was print quality uh, with a little bit of tweaking not really much at all um, i was able to get some really good prints from this printer 
uh, including some of these minis that I did. Uh, I did a video on minis and just in general, so I'll link to that in the description as well. But I was able to get a really high resolution print from an FDM printer um, that looks fantastic. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's not gonna touch a resin printer, uh, but for what it is, it turned out great. Um, so the overall print quality from this printer has been fantastic without much tweaking at all. Um, and the dimensional accuracy has been pretty good as well. I've had issues where, with other printers where uh, you have to go through and really make a lot of tweaks and stuff to get um, 0.25 inches as an example to actually come out as 0.25 inches. It can be a plus or minus 10 or 15 percent I've seen on some bad printers. Uh, so out of the box, assuming you have a solid foundation here, um, I've had no issues with this printer. Prints have been great and I've been able to get really good results. Uh, so for that category, I would give this an A+. Uh, and again, I cover all of that in different videos. Um, I'll be linking to them in the description below. But now let's talk about a couple things that I don't like. Uh, first one being um, the firmware that comes with these by default. I don't like that they don't have the thermal runaway protection. It seems like they've tried to add it in later printers, but it's still questionable at best. Uh, I'm not sure why they go with um, their own version of uh, the firmware versus using like Marlin or something like that. I'm assuming there's some cost implications associated with it, but I can't confirm or deny that. Um, but if you are going to be running any of the Creality printers, I would either test the thermal run array protection on it if you can, if you think it's there, or upgrade to the Marlin firmware. I know you, it's a little bit of work. You do have to install a bootloader and then cut over to it. So it does take about a half hour, give or take. Um, but it's well worth it. And then once you do it once, uh, it's the upgrade process is a couple minutes each time, so it's no big deal there. But you can actually update it without any problems. I know Creality does offer updates, and they send another version of the firmware with the BL Touch unit, but again, there's limitations with it. Um, th that one was supposed to have the thermal runaway protection, but I've read multiple threads where they were testing it, and it's just not there. Uh, so that's probably my biggest gripe about this printer. Uh, for the price, don't get me wrong, this is a fantastic printer. Uh, it's slower than my, a couple other printers I have, but I have like a TAS 6, but you're not really comparing apples to apples. That one's about twice as fast, but you're also comparing around a $300 printer to a $2,000 printer. So it's not really a fair comparison. Uh, for the price, I think that the Creality printers really give you the best performance and value. Um, if you're wanting, if you have issues with the brand or anything like that, and you are wanting to branch off into others, um, the ET4 by Anet is a good one. Um, that's probably the biggest competitor to the Ender 3. Um, I, another downside about this printer, which kind of knew about it when you're getting into it, um, but the bed is a little bit smaller than others. So if you're looking for really large prints and the 220 or 230 by 230 uh, bed isn't big enough and you want like a 300, you're gonna have to go up to like your CR10 or something along those lines. And I mean, that's fine. Uh, there's uh, different mods and stuff that go along with it. Uh, just make sure that you know what you're wanting to print when you buy the printer because you're kind of stuck with the bed. I think that they do have a mod that you can use to expand the bed a little bit. I've had people talk about it. I haven't tried to use it and I've also heard people say that they've had issues with it. So I wouldn't buy this banking on the fact that I could increase the build volume. So just keep that in mind. All right, then going back to your uh, options, if you're looking at something else, obviously you have a different printer in the Creality lineup, um, most popular being the newest iteration of the CR10, huge build surface, fair price. Um, they are, it looks like they are making some changes to the, um, the control. Uh, they're starting to add touch panels and stuff like that, which would be nice. Uh, so you'll probably be able to get uh, older printers at a discounted price. Uh, so if you're looking for a good time to buy and might want to wait for that to happen. Um, but the main competitors to this, like I said, is the um, ET4, uh, which is the ANET printer, or the U30 by AlphaWise, which I haven't really dug too much into it. Um, I didn't, 
I don't know much about the brand, so I don't want to recommend that one either way. Um, but it does come up on a lot of searches when you're doing compares, and it seems to be pretty similar in most ways. Uh, it does come with a nice touch UI, so if that's something for you, um, that might be worth it. Uh, but just keep in mind that I don't know what the community support there is. I believe with the Anet does have a strong community, so you shouldn't have any issues there. Uh, but with AlphaWise, I'm just not sure. So I uh, keep that in mind. But if I was looking at a printer around the $300 price range, give or take, I'll be looking at one of those three. And then for the bigger build volume, I would be looking at the CR10. Uh, if you're really wanting to save up money and get a printer that's really solid, um, I think right now one of the best printers on the market is the Prusa. Uh, the fantastic printers are one of the first in the industry, if not the first. Um, a lot of times there's a lead on getting them shipped. Uh, I know one of my buddies waited a couple of weeks or almost a month before it even shipped. And I know people who have waited even longer, so keep that in mind. But the Prusa is going to be a very well-built machine. It has the auto level and everything in it, but it's not one that you want to tweak. So if you're wanting a printer to kind of learn the hobby, uh, start playing around with things, uh, printing mods and just having fun, for the price, I'm going to go with the Ender 3 all day. If I want it a little bit larger, I would probably go with the CR10. Um, the ANET makes it a little bit more difficult for some of the mods just because of the drive systems it uses. So I am I guess I'm impartial to it. Uh, if you're looking for mods though, I don't know if I'll be looking at that type of printer. Uh, again, it's just really a preference. A lot of these printers, um, especially the ones that are coming from China, they're most of the same thing. I mean, you're going to have some differences in the build frames, things like that. Uh, overall print volume but like I said if you are going to branch out to different models or makes um, make sure that you are getting something with a solid frame the frame will make or break the printer in most cases um, like I said the one that I had before which had the 2020 frame all the way around even after the reinforcements I mean it made it better but I still have a lot of random issues with it and I think I paid almost four hundred dollars for the printer um, so it, I wasn't happy with it. All right, so I guess to summarize, the Ender 3 is a fantastic printer for the money. If you're considering it and the build volume works for you, just go ahead and get it. If you have the extra money, I would go for the Pro because it has a little bit more stability in the frame and it has the upgraded power supply, which uh, helps with consistency. Um, I believe it has a little bit more power. I don't remember the exact specs offhand, so don't quote me on that. Uh, but it is the upgraded model from a previous one. Uh, I think they were having some issues with the first version. Uh, but yeah, overall, um, great printer. Worst case, you buy it, you don't like it. If it's on Amazon, just send it back. I mean, you're not really losing too much there. Um, maybe shipping costs, but um, it's not bad. Um, oh, I guess one final thing I didn't bring up yet was the assembly. Uh, this did take me probably uh, maybe an hour, hour and a half to assemble. Uh, just sitting down, uh, not really rushing, but just going through. And it wasn't difficult, uh, but if you don't have much experience with 3D printers, it might be a little bit more challenging than some of the other ones. Uh, but there are a lot of videos out there that are that can help you with it. I was thinking about making one. I did a search for it, and there were so many videos that I figured it wasn't even worth the time trying to create another one. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, go and leave a comment below. I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. And make sure you guys hit that like button and subscribe. Thank you.